at Ascension, a very special welcome to guests and visitors that have joined us today. We are glad and excited that you're here, uh, whether that be here in person or if you joined us online, because every time we're here, we are all about Jesus and what God has done for us in Jesus and the forgiveness that God fully and freely gives us. Today we get to kick off a two-part worship and sermon series that really is leading into what's coming up after it. So in two weeks, we're starting this church season of Lent where we see Jesus going and fighting the battles that we can't win, Jesus defeating the enemies that we can't defeat and, and going through Lent and sacrificing himself for us. How we're going to lead into that is I think we really need to understand who is it that fights those battles? Who's going out? Who's the one doing this? This week and next week, our sermon and worship series is Who is he? Today we're going to see that Jesus is the healer cares about bodies, who cares about our lives and what's going on. But even more than that, there's one more important thing that he wants us to heal us from. Everything you're going to need for worship, you can find printed up on the screens up in front or on your screens at home. May God bless our worship this morning. Our opening song is Ancient of Days. Please stand. We begin our worship with words that remind us of what God does for us in our baptisms. When he washes us clean of our sins, he adopts us. He brings us into his family so that when we hear his name, we know that's our name now too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we do have to admit that when we come together, we haven't done the kind of things that God calls us to do. 
that we haven't lived the moral life that God calls us to live up to, that we are sinners who need forgiveness. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. And our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, by Christ's authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Lord God, you care about us. You work to restore our bodies and heal us according to your will. Help us to see that you have power over all things on earth so that we can be even more confident that you have healed us from our sins. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. At the center of our Sunday morning worship services is God's word. Today we're looking at three different parts of God's word, and each part of God's word we're always trying to see Jesus and how this is connected to Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. Today in our three readings, the theme that you're going to see very clearly is God has power to heal. God has power to do good things for us that nothing else can do. Even back in the Old Testament times, they understood the Savior who is coming. He is going to refresh our bodies. In him, we're going to have something more. This is what God tells us from Isaiah chapter 40. Before him, before God, all the nations are as nothing. They are regarded by him as worthless and less than nothing. With whom then will you compare God? To what image will you liken him? As for an idol, a metal worker casts it and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions silver chains for it. A person too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will, not, that will not rot. They look for a skilled worker to set up an idol that will not topple. But do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. He brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root into the ground than he blows on them and they wither, and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you complain, Jacob? Why do you say, Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? My cause is disregarded by my God? Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of the Lord. The second part of God's word that we're going to take a look at helps us understand that God has something to defend us against. That we need God's constant healing and presence in our lives because there is an enemy trying to attack us. 
but we know we have God on our side. We know he's going to help. We know he's going to heal when we do get hurt. This comes from 1 Peter. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. One of the things we really like to do for the kids who are here to get you interested and listen carefully and pay attention to the sermon and think through what we're going to talk about in just a couple minutes is uh, give you something to think through. And today you can tell me, it's probably one of the easiest questions I think I've ever asked you, uh, why do you go to the doctor? Someone raise a hand, give me a thought. Why do you go to the doctor? Margo, why do you go to the doctor? We're coming, Aiden, one second, I promise. Why do you go to the doctor, Margo? What do you go to the doctor for? For owies. For owies. Yeah, you get owies and you go to the doctor. Good job, Margo. Aiden, what were you going to say, bud? Why do you go to the doctor? Um, for checkups. For checkups. Yeah, to make sure you're doing okay. That's right. I love it. Nora Kaufman, what do you think? Why do you go to the doctor? To get healthier again, right? And let's do one more. Carly, what do you think? Why do you go to the doctor? Yeah. Sometimes you even need to get shots. Yeah, even if it's hard, right? You guys, you've all been saying the same things, right? You know, why do you go to the doctor? Because the doctor can make you better. Did you know Jesus, God, is kind of like a doctor? Today we're going to hear how he was a doctor who really did help with like like problems of people's bodies, problems where people were hurting, and he healed them and made them better. But do you know Jesus is a doctor who heals us from something even more important? From our sins, from the mistakes we make, from all the ways that we fail, Jesus heals, Jesus forgives. That's what we're talking about in the sermon. Listen carefully. You're going to hear how Jesus is a better doctor. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. Help us to listen carefully to your word and know what you have to tell us more than anything that you love us and forgive us and promise to heal us from our sins. In your name we pray. Amen. Our next reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And please stand for the Gospel. Just like we would do if there is an honored guest who comes in, we stand up and show them honor and respect. We do this for the words and works of Jesus that come out in the gospel parts of the Bible. This is Mark chapter 1, 29 to 39. This is going to serve as the basis of the sermon. It's really clear. Jesus is the healer, and most importantly, the healer from sin. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her by the hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. But he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. For that is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of the Lord. 
Please be seated. We're going to sing our next song, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Let's all join together and pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. For you are our rock, you are our redeemer. Amen. Who is Jesus? That's a question people have been asking for about 2,000 years. And for those 2,000 years, people have been coming up with all sorts of answers to that question. Jesus is the one who's disrupting our religion, trying to get rid of the Old Testament and those old ways that we need to follow. Jesus is the pretty good teacher who's helped me make my life better, and he kind of shows me the right pattern and the right way to live life. Among the prophets that have existed in our world, Jesus, he's not the top, but he's pretty, pretty close to the top of the prophets in our world. Jesus is the Savior, some would say. If you watched the Super Bowl last year, you got this ad, and I think it's going to come up against this year. You remember this one? Jesus, he gets us. All you got to do is go to Google do the Google autocomplete kind of thing, type in Jesus is dot, 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 do the ellipses, and you're going to find a whole lot about what people have said for these 2,000 years. But it's really clear. People want to know, who is Jesus? Wherever your level of understanding is at right now, I can promise you, if you're in the Bible and reading the Bible, it is going to grow so that you have things that you read and know about Jesus that kind of make you wonder, who is Jesus? Like the kind of head-scratching comparisons Jesus would make in things that we call parables that sometimes are really hard to understand. Or like the biting, hurtful words that Jesus would speak to some of his closest friends that had done life with him. Like how Jesus chose to hang out with the lowest and loneliest of his society and intentionally spend a lot of time with those people? Even when you have the Bible and you start reading the Bible and get into the Bible, what you find is that there is just a lot of depth 
a lot to know about Jesus. One detail I think that has been passed down inside Christianity but also outside of Christianity too is that people claim Jesus did miracles. Whether some people believe that it's real and true or other people believe it's just this like sleight of hand sort of thing, Jesus and miracles are tied together. Miracles that can't be understood from experience. Things that would make us rightly stand here and just have our jaws hang wide open if they happened. Jesus did these things, people claim. That's why I'm really glad and excited that you're here this morning. That's why I'm glad and excited that we are going to talk about this because we're going to get into it. Can the label fit Jesus is the healer? We're going to see. More than most others. This part of the Bible, this book of the Bible, Mark, it kind of reads like this historical account of this happened and then this happened and then this happened. Mark also does this thing where other Gospels record the same story and it takes like five chapters. Mark takes that and shrinks it down to like five sentences so that as you're going through, going through it and reading and processing, you don't feel like you have enough time to understand what's going on and catch the details. I think that's cool for this story because that might help us understand how the people around Jesus were feeling on this day. Before this section, Jesus had been in their religious center in the synagogue, and Jesus had been teaching with authority, like sharing God's word with power and certainty in a way that the people there had never understood before. When a demon-possessed man came in and tried to distract the people from Jesus' awesome teaching, Jesus went and he cast the demon out, and he gave that man his life back. So that at the end of their time together, all the people just kind of started looking around at each other, wondering, what did they just experience? Who is this guy? What did he come to do? The other thing that happens is the gossip about who this guy is spreads almost as fast as like they had the internet and this was breaking news. Word about that day in the synagogue, it just spreads like wildfire. So before the people had time to really process and work through what happened, Jesus was on the move. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew, some of Jesus' disciples and his closest friends. But with Mark, you get this feeling of Jesus needs to keep going. Jesus needs to get on to the next thing. Jesus is on a mission and nothing's going to stop him. And his friends made sure that was true. Because Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever. And they immediately told Jesus about her. After those disciples saw and experienced what they saw and experienced, they had to tell Jesus. They couldn't stop. If Jesus could heal that man and teach like that, then maybe he could heal the mother-in-law. Maybe their life would completely change. That's why it's kind of amazing what happens next reads almost like nonchalantly, like just another thing and not a big detail that's going on. We just simply get, he went to her, took her by the hand, helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. Hours later, Jesus was showing people, again, he is the healer. That sam same day, though, there was, there was more. And not a few or a little bit more. Everybody showed up. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door then. Because these people lived in the same world that you and I live in. Because they had aches and pains and terminal diseases. More than what you and I usually experience, though, they also had their family and friends and people that they loved under the power and influence of demons destroying their life. So all of these people with all of that, they went to Jesus, to the healer. 
to the healer with hope in their hearts. All of them wanting and thinking maybe, maybe Jesus is the healer that they've heard that he was going to be. TV shows about doctors have been popular. I think for all of us here, it kind of spans generations, right? It doesn't matter what show it is. Uh, maybe doctors who are far away in a country in the military or doctors who are studying to be doctors or doctors who work in an emergency room or doctors who try to make the hospital fun. All these shows, I think, though, I think it's fair to say that they kind of blend together with the same characters and the same plots and the same kind of stories going on. But there's one recent doctor show that has at least one character that stands out. Anybody else watch this one? Good Doctor? I think it's still on. I think it's in its last season this year. This was a TV show that Joanna and I, I remember specifically, we watched back when TV was a you watch at this time during the week and catch the episode and get it going on. But more than that, I remember this show because this show is about a doctor. His name is Sean, and he has autism. So this doctor, his life is not like any of the other doctors on the show. His challenges are not close to the challenges that the rest of them have. His strengths are rare and unique and different than everybody else. And over time, as you watch, you start to find out that people trust him, that patients learn, that colleagues respect, that you as the watcher, you can't help but say at the very end that he is a good doctor. I love it because this kind of breaks out of that perspective, that way of thinking, where this is what a doctor is. This is what a doctor should look like. This show helps us understand he might look like somebody else and do things in his own way. Well, with the crowds that were around Jesus at the door, waiting and wanting him to do what they thought he was going to do, he did. Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons. Whoever got close enough to show the problem and experience his work on this day would have gone home whole and healed and perfectly better like they'd always wanted. At some point during that night, the crowd that was there left. Maybe it got too late or too dark. Jesus was too far away in line and they knew they were never going to get him. Whatever it was, uh, by the middle of the night, all the people that had been there, they went home. Probably reasoning that in the morning they could go back, Jesus would be there, the healer would do his healing thing, then they could get healed. But here's where the healer breaks from the expectations and the assumptions that you would have. Because when they woke and went back to the house that morning, the healer was gone. No more Jesus. No note to tell them, hey, I'm coming back in a little bit after this. No explanation for what might have been more important than being there to help and to heal them. No more Jesus. So where was he? What was he doing? Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Not even his closest friends knew what he was thinking. So, Jesus, what were you thinking? What are you doing? The people need your help, and you're not there. Don't you care about them? Don't you want to heal them? It's parts of the Bible like this that make me understand a little bit more why you might not believe in Jesus. Because if he had the power and the ability and he loved people, why not stay and heal? Why not make them better, make them perfectly healthy so that everybody in that city gets rid of all the aches 
and all the scratches and all the bad feelings that they have, if Jesus really is the healer, why did he choose not to heal anymore? If you don't believe yet, I want you to know that believers struggle with this too. Maybe not with like the words and believing the words of the Bible that they're real and that these are true things that did happen, but I think maybe it looks a little bit more like this. Their husband or their wife goes from perfectly healthy to six months later being in a hospital bed and unable to move and on their way home to heaven. Or their kid starts complaining about a headache and how there's head pain and the pains just keep getting bigger and stronger and they go and they find out that there's not much time left. Or their life plans that they thought were great, that looked good and stuff was going really well and then both of them lost their job and now they only have a few weeks to come up with enough money to keep living the kind of life that they had. All believers, all of us have this side that struggles with the idea that if God is good, then how could he let this happen? I think another way of saying it is we like God to be on our terms. We crave control over the pain and the suffering so that we can keep it all away. We're like the patients who uh, aren't the doctor's favorites, the ones who go in and tell the doctor exactly what to do and how to do it and refuse any other kind of treatment, which I think we can say is kind of crazy because when you're sick, you might not even be able to think straight. You and I might not have any idea more than Googling and studying what we can read in a little bit compared with people who have trained for decades. No, we want the healer to do what we want him to do and he needs to do it here and now. So how does Jesus explain himself and his decision? Jesus replied, let us go someone el somewhere else to the nearby villages. What could be so important there? Why leave without telling everybody else first? So I can preach there also. For that is why I have come. Jesus spent days healing people's bodies. He would stop trips, like completely stop them right where they were standing to heal. He would go to faraway cities to heal. He would listen to the sick people who had no other options on their way to death, nobody else to talk to. He would go and touch them and heal them. Jesus prioritized his time healing people. He did. But that wasn't his first priority. First, Jesus needed people to know that he had come to be their healer from sin. Jesus preached about how people could come and be together with God again, even though they struggled. Jesus revealed that God's forgiveness and peace don't come from outward physical signs of health and blessing. They come from him and his future death in their place and his new life and the new life that he would freely give. This is why I'm excited and I'm so glad that you're here because the healer wants to heal you. Yes, he cares about you physically, he does, but spiritually, that does more. Knowing you are forgiven in Jesus means that you don't have to let the shame keep pushing you down. His unchanging love is going to be the thing that you can hold on to when the rest of your life seems to slip away. And every time you struggle and you face the issues that you're going to have to face, he's going to point you back to his healing work and what has been done already for you. He wants you to know more than anything, Jesus is the healer of sin and he's that healer for you. So what did the healer do? He traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and healing, driving out demons. He did not stop doing what he had been doing. He spent more time and made a point to help people. He healed the physical healing and care for our bodies and lives. He did that, trying to teach people one thing, that he could back it up. 
that he could help people spiritually. This sermon's been really making me think this week about how unsure the medical industry that we have is. I'm going to start out by saying I have a healthy trust for doctors and nurses. You that are that and you that are watching, you know what's going on. You've got the training. I'm always going to lean on you and your knowledge. But sometimes, isn't this true, sometimes you can't help with the uncertainty. Maybe let's try this treatment. Maybe let's try that one. We're not sure. This might be the problem that you've got going on. It might also not be the problem that you have. And that's when us non-doctors, that's when we hop on Google and we read a tiny bit. And even after that, still uncertainty is there. With all that uncertainty built in sometimes, you know what's cool? We still go to the doctor when we need to go to the doctor. Because we know that when we go to the doctor, it saves lives. It heals. Maybe you've even experienced that yourself. Can you imagine, though, if there was a hospital or doctor or drug that was actually so great and so effective and so worthwhile that people who buy up the ads for all the commercials, that someone would buy up all these ads and spread this news far and wide trying to help people understand this? If we had something clearly that good, that effective, that helpful to save life, we would probably do everything we can to tell people about it, right? If we know how healing really does work, we wouldn't hold back. We would send people there. So here's two things that you know about Jesus healing right now today. I can promise you, you know these things. Thing number one, you know people who are hurting people who are going through the physical, emotional abuse in relationships, and you can see it on their faces, and you can feel it in how they talk and interact with each other, and that some of the people experiencing that are starting to lose hope. You know the people that are going through the medical issues, that are struggling and just praying that somebody might get a little bit better. You know the people who have the drug, alcohol abuse that has wrecked relationships, you know the people that are gossiping behind backs and it's just hurting? You know people who are struggling and who need help because they're people like you and me. That's thing number one that you know. Thing number two you know about Jesus' kind of healing, you know it's going to help. It's not going to fix their bodies or their relationships perfectly. It's not going to make all the pain go away but you know what their hearts are missing. You know how much it's helped you and held you up in life. You know that Jesus is the healer, and you know what it means to know him. So here's my challenge for you this week. Even if you're not a doctor or medical person, work at connecting the people who need healing with the healer. Whoever you had thinking about in your mind a second ago, do it this week. Connect with them. Text messages, emails, whatever way. Every single day this week, make it a point to get out of your comfort zone and to tell them about Jesus. Tell them how Jesus is for them. Share passages that encourage them and give them a solid foundation in Jesus. Even pass along my cell phone number. Even if you do that every day and say, hey, talk to Pastor Steve. He really wants to share Jesus with you. Whatever way you want to do it, but do it because they need help, and you know what's going to help them. And then how are you going to know if it actually helps and works? Because as soon as you do this, they're going to break down in tears, and they're going to completely change their life, and everything is going to look so much better. Maybe, but probably not. But God's going to work through it, because he promises he will. Because he promises it's not going to be for nothing. And maybe, just maybe, if Jesus is the healer that he says he is, maybe Jesus is going to make all the difference. Amen. Please stand.
in response to God's word and what God tells us about how he heals us from our sins and forgives us, we confess our faith. We say this is what we believe. Today we're using the words that we call the Apostles' Creed, completely based on the Bible. Uh, we'll say these words together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. One of the best things that you can do to help us and our ministry here at our church is get connected. You can uh, scan this. You can get on our website. You can download our Church Center app. That will give me an awesome ability to reach out and to connect with you and try to learn uh, what you're interested in, how we can serve you and our community better. Uh, you can also uh, give if you've been moved to give. Uh, God loves a uh, free giver. There's no compulsion to give whatsoever for anybody. If you've been moved, you can do that through that plate in back or online, too. Uh, we'll take a minute just to get connected. Please stand for prayers. If there's ever anything that we can pray for you as a church here on Sunday mornings, please let me know before worship. We'd love to include it in our prayers. At the end of every little petition, I'll say the words, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time, you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You ushered in the day of grace, so long foretold. Lord, in your mercy. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought the light of life to those walking in darkness. 
and the joy of salvation to those doomed to death. Lord, in your mercy. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the farthest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Rise us up and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair, and comfort those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear us this morning as we pray our private prayers. And hear us also as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll sing our last song, Jesus Strong and Kind.
morning again. Thanks to everybody for joining us. I think I said it during the worship service, but I kind of forget to say at the beginning. I'm Pastor Steve. I get to serve as the pastor here. Again, we're thankful and glad that you're with us this morning. If you have not gotten your thank you gift for being here, it's been a couple weeks. Uh, at the Welcome Center, we actually have them. So if you haven't gotten yours, please make sure that we give you your thank you gift for being here. And uh, yeah, again, if you're willing to get connected and give us your info, I would love to have the opportunity to follow up, to get to know you better, to get to know how we can serve you better here too. Lots of good announcements. Tomorrow night, 7.30, we're continuing with our Bible study called Starting Point. We're covering what does God's word say? What do we believe as a church? Uh, come, if you haven't been there yet, no worries. We just kind of finished lesson one, maybe not finished lesson one, so it's not too late. Uh, please, we would love to have you there. The discussion's been awesome. I can promise it's worth it. And I can also say, even if you're not connected to Christianity, even if you don't know anything, please come. We want your thoughts and questions and opinions. It's going to help us dig into God's word even better. Yeah, this Friday at 6 p.m., our next movie night. This is something we love doing here. We actually have a popcorn machine. So when you come, you're going to smell popcorn. Just awesome. Uh, fun family movie. I don't know what it's going to be. Other people know right now, but it's going to be great. Families will be here. We'll uh, have food, snacks, treats. Come hang out 6 p.m. Invite friends to really low-key way to introduce people to us as a church. See that we're normal people. Uh, the week after that, not too long, this is what kicks off that church season of Lent, where we see Jesus fight these battles and defeat our enemies and win our forgiveness. Uh, it's a special worship service called Ash Wednesday because kind of the main thought is we are dust, and to dust we will return. That earthly bodies, earthly things, Jesus cares, God cares, but more than that, it's eternity that God wants us to think about. Ash Wednesday, God is going to help us kick off this season and start focusing even more on Jesus. Uh, we are going to have a soup supper at 5 p.m. I think the sign-up sheet is out at the Welcome Center, right, Skylar? Just go see Skylar. Uh, she's coordinating food. We're going to have food. Uh, again, go Valentine's Day lunch. And then after that, come here for supper, a service that is going to help you get even more focused on Jesus. That's at 6 p.m. Coming up March 23rd through the 27th, we've got a team of college students coming from University of Wisconsin to come and help us spread this good news of Jesus in our community a little bit more. Uh, we are still looking for hosts, so if you're willing and interested, come talk to me. Let me know. We'll give you an update really soon uh, what we might plan on doing. Uh, so 23rd through the 27th, also keep an eye out at least one night that week. Uh, they're going to give like a presentation of, hey, here's what we did. Here's the interactions we had. Here's your community. And uh, it would be great for you to be here so you could listen and understand a little bit more. I don't know what night yet. Because we're kind of playing it by ear weather-wise. They're going to have a beach day. They're coming from Wisconsin in March. It'll be good for them to have sun and beach. So I'll update you as we get closer on what day we're planning for that. But in the back of your head. Yeah, really soon. Uh, we're going to be uh, working on connecting more with our community in a really awesome way where we want parents to come, drop their kids off, and go on a date. Like, for free. Like, just come, and we promise we're going to take good care of your kiddos. Uh, two things we need for that. Volunteers to be here, help watch the kids, help uh, make sure stuff goes well here. And then parents, drop off your kids and go on a date. Not too hard. It's pretty awesome. Do it. April 19th. A few of us will make sure to be here. In Lent, we're going to continue another thing that we love doing here at Ascension, which is life groups. These are small group gatherings of Christians, usually in people's homes, sometimes in restaurants. Uh, but you kind of feel there's a lot of people. It's kind of hard to know a lot of names here and actually get to know depth, right? Um, these help you do that in a smaller setting. Uh, for Lent, it's going to be uh, digging into Jesus' passion. So like the week where Jesus dies on the cross, we're going to work week by week this coming up to get you ready for Easter and Holy Week. Uh, starting soon, though, that's, man, three weeks? Those will be happening. If you're interested and you aren't connected to a group, let me know. Check out our Church Center app. You can get connected to one there. Or if you'd like to start another one, that would be awesome, too. We would love that. We have uh, 
Ooh. Yeah, we'll go back to counseling. This is something our church uh, pays for and provides to you people connected to our church. Uh, I've used this. Other people are using this. Let me know if you might need uh, a referral. Please make use of this. Uh, then the next one, Diggs, was cleaning, right? Uh, we do need people to clean this church. We have an awesome facility. If you haven't been here long, this is how old people have been here. Four years? Five years. Going on five, right? This facility is awesome. It's such a really cool blessing. It is fantastic, right? One of the ways that you can help serve and take care of this is come and clean about a half an hour, if you want, hour a week. Come and make sure that it is looking good as God's house uh, can be. Uh, if you want, talk to me about that. Church Center app, though, is an easy way to get signed up for that, too. Diggs has given a thumbs up. So then the last thing I get to say, which I say every week, thank you to the people who served, tech team and back, Amanda for recording, getting music ready, Audrey for doing music things. Um, thank you to everybody for being here. Your presence means a lot, too. Now, though, now you get to go out and enjoy really yummy treats that were baked for you and coffee and snacks and good stuff. As you do that, be intentional and say hi to somebody you don't know. Ask them who they are. Introduce yourself. Uh, chat a little bit with people and, and get to know them a little bit better as you do that. After that, about 20 minutes back in here, uh, we're going to do a Bible study, which is kind of like the opposite of worship. Worship, we're doing who is Jesus and Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, Bible study time in here is who is he, who is the devil. So it's going to be real interesting. It's going to balance these Sundays out really well. Uh, I promise I'm not going to call on you if you don't want to raise your hand. I also promise it will be worth it to be here. So 15, 20 minutes back in here for that study. Kids going over to Sunday school over there. Whew. That's a marathon of announcements. Talking too much. God bless your weeks as you live for him.